Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you once again to Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. Well, we're here at the end of April. We've gone through another month. Can you believe it? Time is moving on, but God has truly been blessing us and bringing us together to do some great, great things. I got a few things to share with you. I want to encourage you about this week. Uh, and so particularly to the men, I want to share with you that something very special happening this weekend. I pray that you'll be a part of it. It's a very special conversation. We have churches, men coming together from a variety of different places to have a, a deep conversation. Sometimes, you know, we need to have some conversation. We need to talk. We need somebody we can talk to that are hair down. So this is for men only. And, and the theme of it is a conversation about temptation. <laughs> some of y'all know we've been through it. Some of you know we go through it all the time. And, and, and you do. You go through it. You feel it. You deal with it. Sometimes you need to learn and talk to, to, to some people about it. You think you're the only one. You think you're going through it alone. Guess what? You're not. We're having a deep conversation this weekend. I pray that you will join us and be a part of it, men of God, this weekend. It will be worth the time connecting up with us this weekend. God bless you with that. I hope to see you. You can join us, by the way, in any of our services. Our services take place here, not only uh, both on Sundays and on Wednesdays. We have very special time services. Uh, we have Sunday school at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning in the classrooms, followed by our main sanctuary service at 11.30 a.m. Join us, bring your whole family. That's, that's for more than just men. You can bring your whole family. Bring your children, bring your wife, bring your friends, bring your girlfriend, and, and come and join us in our services here on Sunday mornings. Wednesdays we have service as well. 7 p.m. is our midweek Bible study. We've got a great series going on right now. You can jump in on it and you will be blessed by that. That's at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. You can also join us for prayer at 6.30 on Wednesdays here or by calling in, either for that one or on Saturdays. You can call us Saturdays at 8 a.m. for prayer as well. Connect up. You will be blessed by these connections. These connections help to build you, strengthen you, inspire you, take you to the next level in God. Do not forsake, the Bible says, the assembling of ourselves together. These things help to make us stronger. So I know you got a lot of things going on in your life. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot of plans, but you know what? I encourage you, if you put God into your plans, you will be, you will not regret it. You will be spiritually blessed by all these things that are coming up. So now I want to take you to the Word of God. I want to take you to part two of the sermon we started last week, which was the beginning of a series. And this series is to help inspire you, encourage you about being connected into the house of God, the church, the body of Christ. You have to be part of the body. You know, I know you can have a direct connection with God in terms of your salvation, but understand you're part of a body. And if you're out there by yourself, your little hand, little finger, little toe by yourself, you're not going to get much done. You need to be connected in. So I want to inspire you with this word. This is the beginning of the series. And the question that's asked here is what is the perfect church? Think about this. I believe it will bless you. This is part two. If you missed part one, go back to, to last week on our YouTube channel and you can get the first part of it there and catch right up with the rest of the series. God bless you. I pray that you'll be blessed by this and I hope that we'll see you this weekend and see you real soon. God loved the children of Israel individually, but when the whole house got together and turned to him, God moved from heaven. He moved heaven and earth on their behalf when the people of God came together as one. So to reach perfection, Four things we need to do real quickly. Number one, we need to become a stable and unified body. I'll show you some scripture on this in a minute. We have to become a stable and unified body. Stable. We can't be in today, out tomorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow. In one minute, gone the next. Hopping in, hopping out. There needs to be stability and there needs to be unity. God works in one accord. That's one of the things I'm going to talk about in the next few weeks. God works when we come together in one accord. There is something about stability and unity which equals maturity. And God is looking for a church that's mature enough to be stable regardless of what is coming against us. That will trust him even when we're having a bad day. Sometimes we come to church and it's been a bad week. Sometimes people have a bad week. They don't come to church. <laughs> Amen? Had a rough time staying home this week. <laughs> we 
a little windy out there. Stay home this week. I think it's a little cold. Praise the Lord. Won't see me on Wednesday. Hallelujah. <laughs> Stability and unity equal maturity. There's a maturity that of, of our identity where we stand before God and say, God, I am stable, I am here, I am faithful, I am serving you no matter what comes my way because now God can depend on us, now God can use us because no matter what comes, what happens, what turns, he knows that we'll trust him in enough so that he can now lean on us to do something. You know, you can't lean and depend on certain people if you can't trust them to be stable. I can only use you so much if I'm not sure you're going to be here on Sunday. <laughs> amen? I can only use you on my job so much, amen, if I know that certain things you're going to have an attitude about. So now I've got to pick and choose how I use you because, you know, certain things you're going to be the one that's starting the resistance and the rebellion. Amen? You've got to be able to be stable. You've got to be able to be mature in order to reach perfection. The second thing we need is we have to take on his attributes. Somebody say his attributes. We have to become more like him, which number one means that we at times need to be willing to surrender some of our own attributes. Because some of our attributes don't line up <laughs> with his attributes. Some of the things we may want to do or want to be or feel comfortable with may not necessarily be things that God is quite comfortable with. Amen? WWJD? What of the things that you do would you do in front of God? Think about that one for a minute. Let some things roll through the back of your mind. And that thing that I was doing last night and last week, how would I feel about that if I was doing it right in front of the throne room of God? Let that just sink in for a minute. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Where was I at? I lost my place right there. Amen. Attributes. Take on the attributes of God. We have to be willing to set aside some of our attributes to take on God's attributes. That wasn't even in my notes. Amen. <coughs> we have to be willing to take on his teachings. His attitude. God, not my attitude, because I would have had an attitude about that for sure. But God tells me to love somebody when I'm ready to hurt them. God tells me to forgive when I'm ready to just handle it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God tells me to pray for my enemy when I'm ready to cut my enemy. Oh, Lord. I have to take on his, his attributes, his teachings, what he's taught me to do, what he has shown us about living life here in the scriptures. That's the way I need to learn how to live. I need to learn, need to learn how to live a life of faith. I need to learn to live a life that's connected continuously to God. One thing Jesus showed us is that continual connection, always getting back to God, always doing what God did. He emphasized to his disciples, to his, to, to especially the 12, Amen. As he was about to leave, he says, everything you've seen of me, I've seen of my father. The things that I do, the things that I've said, they don't come from me. They come from him. I am a mirror image of my father. We have to learn, as Christ showed us, to become mirror images of him. So whatever he did, how he behaved, that's why the disciples had to follow him 24-7 because it wasn't just a matter of what he said when he was up on the mountain. It was what he did at the midnight hour. It was what he did when people approached him and he wasn't up in front of the pulpit. It was how he handled it, amen, when his close friend Lazarus died. It was how he dealt with the situation when things unanticipated and unexpected happened. It was how he dealt with situations that couldn't be planned or predicted. They had to see and understand his behaviors. Jesus, how do you handle this? Because they want taxes from us. Jesus, how are you going to handle this? Because it's the scribes, and you know, they're saying, talking about you right now. How are you going to handle this? Why are you over there touching and handling the, and getting with those sinners like that? They needed to not just hear his words. They needed to understand his attitude and his responses and his priorities so that they could become more and more like him. We have to take on his attributes, his giftings. 
Christ had gifts. He was able to heal. He was able to restore. He was able to speak a word of hope. He was able to renew and bring, redeem people back to where they needed to be. He had giftings that he was able to exemplify before people. And his spirit, he said, I'm leaving, but I'm sending you the comforter. You need my spirit with you. You need something to give you strength and power and inspire you and to anoint you so that you could do things that you can't do of yourself. We have to take on his attributes to become the perfect church. A powerless church is not a perfect church. Church that, lack, that doesn't have anointing can't be a perfect church. We have to take on what Christ had in order to be the perfect church. The third thing we need to do is we need to align to his purpose. Okay, now that I, I, I'm living right, now that I have become stable, now that I'm consistent, now that I have the attributes of Christ, I got to use them for the right reasons. Strike you down in the name of Jesus. You got on my nerves today. <laughs> Amen? You have to have your, the, your purpose aligned to the right thing. You can't just do what you want to do with what God has given you. You have to align to his will. I'm not really striking you down. <laughs> <laughs> you have to align to what he wants done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Lord, what do you want it done in this situation? So we have to align to the will and the purpose of God, even when it doesn't align to what we want. Because I had something I wanted to do tonight. What you mean we need to pray? God, what do you mean I need to get down on my knees? It's late, I want to go to sleep. I had a television show that I've been waiting all week to see. Why are you calling on me now? Why do you want me to go help somebody now? I'm busy right now. We have to align our purpose to his purpose, our priorities to his priorities. What he desires from us, amen, has to become aligned to being number one. So the third thing is aligning to his purpose, and the fourth thing is surrender. Everybody say surrender. I know we hate that word. Surrender. Say it again. Surrender. Surrender. Hate that word. Surrender to his will. Lord, what you want done is what I'm willing to do. Hey, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church with a shout out to all the men in the greater Rochester, Syracuse, Buffalo area. All the men that are striving to do right and be right, but dealing with the struggle that we deal with every day. You might have heard about this event that we have coming up in a couple weeks called A Conversation About Temptation. It's been on our Facebook page now for a couple weeks. It's on our television on our television program, and it's even being distributed to many of the churches in the local area. I wanted you to hear from me personally exactly what this is all about. It's hard to tell from what other people say. I want you to understand why this is important for you and a blessing to come for you. Men, we are coming together to deal with some of the personal issues, inner struggles that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Things inside of us that we carry, struggles of trying to do right, but yet still being tempted by the things around us and not knowing exactly how we're supposed to handle that. Men typically don't talk about things like this. We're trying to keep everything inside, trying to look like we're okay, but we struggle struggle with these issues and sometimes don't know how to deal with them or how to overcome them. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about addictions. I'm talking about drugs. I'm talking about situations with gambling. I'm talking about pornography. I'm talking about the frustration of things that you see and desire, and yet you're supposed to be a certain way. All the inner guilt that goes along with that. Self-identity struggles. All these things come from a common place, and we are coming together to discuss them, to put them out on the table once and for all so we can address them and deal with them. I encourage you to come and join us. It's Saturday, May the 2nd, and a couple of weeks away, and it's going to be powerful. We're going to share about some of these different things and where they come from, even from the Bible spiritually. And then we're also going to have a conversation about it. We have a group of pastors that are coming together as a panel. And you can either share your, your own situations, but if you don't want to be kind of out like that, you don't have to. We're going to take things from you anonymously. And the panel is going to speak to the issues that you've wanted to hear about so long, but been afraid to tell anybody about. This is going to bless you. Ladies, sorry this one's for the men only, but I do encourage you to send your men because they'll be blessed and they'll come back and then they'll be a blessing to you. 
Fathers, bring your sons with you, especially your teenage young adult sons. They need to be a part of this. Bring your men's group, bring your neighbors, bring your close friends. A few hours on Saturday can be life-changing to you for the rest of your life. I hope we'll see you at this event. No charge, no cost, not about making money. It's about blessing the men of God in this area. So come and join us Saturday, May the 2nd, 10 a.m. I look forward to seeing you. God bless you. You have to become first in my life. I'm aligning to your purpose and I'm surrendering to your will. The perfect church is mature. It has the attributes of Christ. It has his purpose in mind. And it is surrendering, it's submissive to his will. The body has to submit to the will of the head. Otherwise, it will never achieve the will and the purpose of God. Turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Remember, this is just the introduction today. We're just getting warmed up. But Ephesians chapter 4, I want to show you some things important about the perfect church. I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. But I want to read you the first several verses out of this passage and help you to understand what Paul is saying here about the church. Many times you've heard different aspects of this piecemeal. And you may see some things here that are familiar, but I want you to understand this is one continuous writing, and there's a purpose why he's writing this the way that he's writing it. He's talking here about the unity of the body, the unity of the church. Beginning at verse 1, Ephesians chapter 4, he says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you, to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. How many of you realize you have a calling? You don't sound real sure about that. You realize you got a calling? You have a calling. You have a purpose. Look at somebody next to you and tell them you have a purpose. You are here for a reason. If you thought you were a nobody that just happened to stumble in the church today, Understand you have a purpose. There is a calling. There is a point for you being part of the body. If you don't understand you have purpose, then you feel like it doesn't matter whether you're here or not. It's irrelevant. If I'm here today, gone tomorrow, it doesn't matter. I don't have any purpose there, right? But you need to understand you have a purpose. You may not have found it yet. You may not understand it yet. You may not be utilizing it yet. But there's a reason why you are called to the body of Christ. We'll come back to that in a minute. Verse 2 says, be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves together with peace. He's talking here about unity in the body. Keep yourselves united. Look at what it said in verse 2. Be patient with each other. How many of you know sometimes we got to be a little... Patient with each other. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we don't get it right. We call the new baby a girl instead of a boy. Help us, Lord. Sometimes we don't get it right. Thank you, Jesus. Patience, patience, patience. Sometimes we got to be patient with each other. Somebody cops an attitude. They had a bad day. They come in. I want to be in this meeting anyway. I don't know why we always having these meetings. I could be doing something else. Cold outside. I'd rather be home. Patience. Because the perfect church isn't always filled with perfect people. Sometimes we're not always in our perfection moment. <laughs> Paul, isn't it amazing that Paul realized that? He, 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 they must have been going through some stuff even back then. It's not just us. Hallelujah. He said, you got to be patient with one another. Be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Making, listen, allowance for each other's what? Faults. Sometimes we got some faults. I'm saved. Sometimes we got some faults. I'm serving God, doing everything I can trying to become more and more like him every day, still got some faults. Sometimes we, we, we find a fault in each other, and when we find a fault, we're like, oh my gosh, they, what? what? They are the 
they were saved, thought they loved the Lord. Oh my gosh, they got faults. Let me get you a mirror real quick. Because in this perfect church, there's a lot of imperfect situations, imperfect people. Sometimes we forget where we came from. We see the new folks coming in and, oh, Lord, they got this going on and they look like that and they act like that. They don't know how to clap right. They don't stand up when we stand up. They don't sing the songs right. Look at them jumping, acting crazy. We don't do that here. Look at how they dress. Look at what they got going on in their life. I heard they got such and such happening. Mm, we find lots of faults. We forget, oh, have mercy, where God brought us from. You ain't been saved all your life. I guarantee you, you haven't been saved all your life. We have to look past each other's faults because of your, because of your, your, because of your love, he says. Always keep yourselves united. Listen, the most important thing he's sharing, you have to keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves. You understand that visual? Bind yourselves. Not just, you know, you got to take some effort, wrap something around you. Because sometimes, you know, you bind things sometimes that don't necessarily want to stay together. If, if you don't bind them together, they fall apart. Right? You wrap things, you intertwine things to keep them together because if you don't bind them, they'll, they'll just go their own separate way. He says, bind yourselves up. Listen, I'm sick of you, but I'm bound to you. I'm tired of your attitude, but I'm bound to you. You got real issues. They keep coming out. I'm tired of seeing them, but I'm bound to you. It don't sound like the perfect church. <laughs> Where am I at? Bind yourselves together with peace. Mm. Help, Lord, your church to come together. He says unity is the important thing. Unity is, in, is you know how the devil will oftentimes split up a church by causing disunity. He will get you divided. He will start cliques. He'll start the left side of the church dealing with their stuff and the right side of the church dealing with their stuff. You know, the left side of the church feels they own the left side of the church. This is our side. Why are they sitting on our side this week? And the right side of the church be like, you know, we handle this stuff. This, this is the right side of the church response. We handle that. Why are they up there trying to handle our stuff? He'll form cliques. You know, a lot of times we put together ministries to help people with common issues. And sometimes you're not careful, they become cliques. The women's ministry becomes the women's clique. And the youth ministry becomes the youth clique. And the men's ministry becomes the men's clique. You know, and, and the drug addict's click becomes the drug, drug addict's click. And all these ministries, <laughs> you're trying to help people and they just, you know, then they got problems with everybody else. Help us, Lord. I can keep going, but I'm trying to be good now. <laughs> the, one of the greatest ways that the devil divides the church is through causing confusion and division in the church. And it's not long before people start slipping out the door. They start falling away. I don't like this place, man. People got attitudes. They got problems. They all got issues with each other. They're all fighting internally. They all been disagreement. They ain't coming here. It divides and breaks down the church. The thing that makes the church strong is unity. I'm going to teach you in the next couple of weeks somewhere about one accord because our strength comes from being one. When we don't see ourselves as one, when we see ourselves just as individuals, we lack the ability to become unified, to become one. And that's a strategy of the devil because our strength comes in one accord. When we are one, not me, but we become one. And many times, particularly today, it's hard for us as a church to see ourselves as one. We see ourselves as individuals who happen to go in that place. You hear me? <laughs> but the power, the strength comes from being unified, being one, being in one accord. All right, let's keep going. Verse 4, it says, we are all one body. Look, he's talking about how, look, look, we're all the same. We're all one. We're all one body. We have the same spirit. We have all been called to the same glorious future. There is only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
There's only one God and Father who is over us and all, over us all and in us all and living through us all. I realize many times people use this scripture to, from a theological standpoint to define what our theology is, and that's fine. But understand the purpose of the scripture is to help us to understand that we are one. That's the real why, the reason he wrote it. That's why it's where it's at. Because he wants you to understand how simple this is. We are one. We. Yes, he's talking about one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Love that scripture. Quoted it many times. Preached it many times. Doctrinal scripture. But the real thing he's trying to tell us is, look, understand, there's only one. We, we are one. We're not to be divided off in this and that and this sect and that sect. They're supposed to be one. We, the body of Christ, are one. Our strength is in one. Our power is in being unified. It's not about building your kingdom over here and my kingdom over there. It's about us being one. <laughs>